so the first ikar is the belief in the existence of God, who is perfect in every manner of existence, and is the primary cause of all that exists. Harambam says this is something that we need to believe in. So I really want to open up and understand what is emuna. When we speak about emuna, what is emuna? Emuna to Harambam. Well, first of all, it's not. Emuna is not specific faith. Emuna to Harambam is comes from yidia, from knowledge, and therefore the mitzvah is ladat to know that there is a Hashem. It's not simply just to say, I believe or I accept. In other words, if we use the word belief, it's a belief that comes out of knowledge, out of awareness and knowledge. So if I believe in these ikarim, because that's what I was passed down from my parents, and that's what they believed in, is that sufficient? So there is a a well-known argument among the medieval philosophers, um, I would call many, like two schools of thought, of the most superior, uh, what we call beliefs, how to believe. In other words, Turibi Udahalevi, for example, as well as some others, the belief and the acceptance through tradition is far superior than the belief through speculation and introspection. But Harambam seems to disagree. Rav Sadia Gaon, clear, Gaon clearly disagrees. And he claims that we first begin to, to accept on tradition what we could later understand and know through speculation. Uh, the Havot al-Vavot, Rabbi Bahya ibn Baquda, says, Halo yadata im lo shamata. That Shmi'ah, which is acceptance, is inferior to Yadi'ah. So there is two different schools of thought, and it's clear that Harambam expects us to analyze and come to uh, understanding through awareness and knowledge. But by no means is there, there is, is he the only opinion. There are other opinions and other sides to that mm. debate. So, specific to the existence of God, Harambam believed to have proven God. Right? And it was the existence, of God. the existence of God, right? And he did so through a process of elimination, almost, right, in the Moren of Uchim. But with new scientific and philosophical advances, um, do you believe God's existence can be proven today? So, let's take a step back. It is true Harambam used in the beginning of Helik uh, Bet to the Moren of Uchim, um, certain 25 postulated principles in which he believed that he used those principles and based on them he can prove the existence of God. Um, Now, many of those principles are no longer relevant and many of his proofs may therefore not be so relevant. We learn, if not just the content of what he said or what he did, but how he did it and the process and the procedures. And that's a very valuable thing that we learn from Harambam. And we therefore can use the modern day knowledge that we have to, to attempt to arrive at many of those conclusions that he arrived using his knowledge. And we do the best we can in that area. Obviously, you know, as science develops, there are many scientific developments which push us and enable us to see Um, the great possibility and science enables us to see the the divine mover, so to speak. Um, Again, to to use science to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt, it becomes very difficult. But many scientific advancements and studies definitely push us into that direction. And there are many people who write books about this in today's some very interesting uh, Jewish scientists and physicists who actually discuss these topics and s- produce some very, very interesting arguments of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the creation in general and much of the Torah 
through that, through scientific principles. Right, but would you say it's been proven? Or we could appreciate? So proven is a difficult word, right? Uh, I would say that it, it enables us to maintain our beliefs while being serious students of science and not seeing that contradiction. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I would frame it. Okay, could you speak to any of those scientific, um, I guess, approaches, maybe, you know, intelligent design or the anthropic principle? Right, so we, we'll just touch on them for a second. The, you know, um, there are many ideas and principles that are been brought. Uh, you mentioned the Itel to design, just basically seeing God's hand in the Bria, right? Seeing and understanding the Bria through, um, through Bria Tachadosh Baruch Hu. And what science has done first, for example, is Harambam had a major argument with the Greeks and the philosophers at his time, which was the main thrust of science, is that they believed in an eternal universe, following Aristotle. And Arambam attacked them harshly. Um, science today, without us needing to do anything, has on its own debunked the entire idea of an eternal universe. And they created this idea of a, the beginning, the beginning of time and the beginning of the universe. That very beginning fits exactly with uh, our whole belief system. We still have a question of the age of the universe, which is a separate issue and a separate question, but the fact of a beginning is revolutionary in scientific principles, and it fits very nicely with our understanding of a beginning. And there are, you know, other areas where science has helped us understand things differently, and our Torah fits very nicely in our belief systems with um, scientific advancements. Obviously, we're not there yet. There are tricky areas which are yet, we have yet to uncover and there are, which seem to clash, but we understand as best as we can. What about non-scientific proofs? Specifically, Viering of Arambam, but Rabbi Yudha Levi and the Kuzari, when he speaks of... So Rabbi Yudha Levi and the Kuzari had an interesting... Uh, his, his, his understanding was that of what we'll call the, the proof of witness, that um, only the Jewish religion uh, proclaimed to have a revelation in front of potentially millions of people, right? All ancient religions had a, had a, a prophet as a personal revelation and brings it to the people, right? But it is only the Jewish religion, in the Buddha Halevi's words, that actually has a revelation in front of potentially millions of people. And he says, you can't trick millions of people. And especially millions of people who, by the Torah's own definition, are not uh, just accepting anything Moshe says. Every other sentence they challenge Moshe Rabbeinu. And yet, if it was a hoax, why does nobody challenge it? And if the entire Torah itself was a hoax, really, meaning that witness also was a hoax, then at some point over generations, somebody would, when it was brought in, would, would claim the hoax. That is uh, Rabbi Yudha Levi's idea. And the idea of concept, if a person wishes to, to lie, you lie in a believable manner. And so Rabbi Yudha Levi felt that that was a proof. Again, um, it's a very interesting idea as we develop and try to understand it. Right. So, I guess to review Da Levi, um, even what he speaks to, I mean, he ends up, you know, trying to prove something from from the text that he's using to prove it. Right. It's it's sort of a little bit of circular reasoning. And well, um, remember, as we said, the Da Levi felt the preeminence and the importance of tradition as part of that of the understanding and belief, and that is the essence of our tradition. So, to the Buddha Halevi, um, Tradition was enough to try to correct. prove God's existence. For Rambam, he wanted something a little bit more scientific. Correct. Okay. Um, with all that said, why do you believe in God? 
So, really, to understand why one should believe in God, um, it's, it's a complex thing, and it's quite personal. You know, each person reads and understands the sources and, uh, and looks into the proofs and the traditions that we have. Um, and based on understanding and knowledge of all of these things, and then living in a world where we learn to actually not just read and understand the proofs, which is extremely important as a beginning, but we live in a world where if you open your eyes, you actually experience the connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu throughout our lives. We understand when you, when you have that relationship that comes from knowledge coupled with the daily experiences that you just open up your eyes and you actually experience HaKadosh Baruch Hu's involvement in your world, there, that creates and solidifies one, one's belief. Uh, and so, much like I give an example, if one wishes to understand a little bit about pain, so he should read about it and understand the neurons and all the neurological developments, but if he gets hit one time, he'll really understand it in a unique manner as well. So when you learn and experience together, the, that comes to build the strongest sense of emunah in HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we could have. If one tries to experience Hashem without uh, not coming out of realm of understanding and knowledge and learning, it can be just oversimplistic and maybe faulty. If we only become robotic and intellectually rigid, then we also lack an element of a personal experience with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So therefore, it needs to be, I think, a combination of both. So it's primarily based off of faith, some understanding, right, some intellect, uh, but mostly the experiences. So I'm not sure most or not, but I think it's a combination of factors. Isn't what you're saying a little bit dangerous? So every person, however they experience That's God, why it's only through Torah. You cannot, otherwise you could lead to Abu Dazara and you could lead to idolatrous experiences and someone wants to try Hasbi Shalom, other ones. It must emanate from Torah. We cannot engage HaKadosh Baruch Hu um, without the, the, the um, framework of Torah. It has to be within that framework. We have no relationship. Man cannot relate to Hashem outside of His revealed Word. That's the only way we can relate to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There's no other manner. So, therefore, it's not uh, we just experience Him any way we see fit and a person experiences this way or that way. There's a framework for that experience, and that is the Torah itself. <laughs>